So our lesson on 13.1 continues our work with special right triangles. Uh, we know all about sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember the mnemonic device we used for sine, cosine, and tangent? It was so, ka, toa. Now the three new trig functions are called cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So this is cosecant, but they abbreviate it with CSC. This is secant, and this is cotangent. You'll notice that they are very closely related to our original three. And I line them up specifically so that you can see the relationship. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but cosecant is his reciprocal. Did you notice that those are reciprocals? So we're going to continue that. Cosine's reciprocal is secant, and tangent's reciprocal is cotangent. I don't think anyone's going to have trouble memorizing cotangent and tangent to be buddies, but cosecant and sine, cosine and secant, in most kids' brains kind of seem backwards. Like you almost feel like they should be swip, uh, swapped. But uh, there's a reason in trig why they are paired up the way they are. It wasn't just willy-nilly assignment of who was who. So the way I remember cosecant goes with sine is I think of cosecant as having like a huge Superman S in the middle. And that's how I remember sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Yes? Is it not? The next page. Okay. Yeah, and 13.4. Yep, they're together. The same left. Same lesson. Wait, how do you, like, how do you remember it? Like, I, I just remember that sine, and then I think of this as having a huge S, and that's how I know sine and cosecant go together. Because it seems kind of opposite. You'd think these two would go together because of the S, but not the case. All right, continue. So I'm going to give you a right triangle. I'm going to tell you a reference angle for theta. Or not, a, not a reference angle, but an angle to reference for theta. And then I want you to come up with the six trig functions. So here we are, standing at angle theta. How would you label five? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Opposite. 13 is the hypotenuse. I don't think we know the adjacent side, but could I calculate the adjacent side? Yes, using what very famous theorem? Pythagorean theorem. So we'd set up a squared plus five squared equals 13 squared. And then you'd end up Taking 13 squared and subtracting 5 squared, and then square rooting the answer? 12. 12, good. So now we're ready to come up with our six trig functions. Sine, remember, is so, so opposite over hypotenuse would be 5 over 13. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so 12 over 13. And tangent would be opposite over adjacent, so 5 over 12. Now, cosecant was whose buddy? Sine. Sine's buddy. So basically, now you just take your sine function and flip them upside down. So 13 over 5. Secant was cosine's buddy. So take cosine and flip them upside down, 13 over 12. And then cotangent is cotangent. It's tangent's buddy, so flip them upside down, it's 12 over 5. Easy enough? So just a little extension of what we did back on what, Friday. All right, here we are. Theta. We know our opposite and our adjacent. I don't think we know the hypotenuse. I think we need to calculate the hypotenuse. So you could do Pythagorean theorem. We're going to set up 12 <coughs> squared plus 16 squared this time because you don't know the hypotenuse. Mm. Is it 20? That was a 3, 4, 5 that's been multiplied by a factor of 3. Did you notice that? 3, 4, by a factor of 4, excuse me. 3, 4, 5. All right, continue. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse up here, by the way. Opposite over hypotenuse would be 16 over 20. But what would be wrong with that answer? Nothing. Oh, there's something. Reduce it. How about 4 over 5? Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, but again, I need you to reduce that, 3 over 5. And then tangent would be opposite over adjacent, 16 over 12, but I need you to reduce that to 4 thirds. 
And now if you remember who's buddies with who, this is an easy rest of the problem. Cosecant would be sine flipped upside down. Go to your reduced version of sine and then flip him. So 5 over 4. Secant would be cosine flipped upside down. So 5 over 3. And then cotangent would be tangent flipped upside down. 3 over 4. Okay. Here we are at theta. This time we know our opposite and our hypotenuse. I need you to do a little Pythagorean theorem to find your adjacent side. This one doesn't come out so pretty. Um, you'll end up taking 17 squared because he's the hypotenuse and you'll have to subtract off 8 squared. Oh, it does come out pretty. Ignore me. It's 15. We'll hit one, let's see, on your homework that does not come out pretty. We'll talk about that in a second. Yes, ma'am? To add or subtract? Okay, I'm kind of taking a shortcut, Olivia, but if you set it up like this, like 8 squared plus, and then you can call him whatever you want, do you see that you'd have to subtract the 8 squared over and then square root it at the end? So I'm kind of shortcutting it because, you know, I'm lazy, but if you're not ready to do that shortcut on your paper, then just write it out the long way. So I'm going to freeze the screen. And let's see if you guys can fill out sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent correctly for this triangle. I think you guys got a jump start on me, so I'm just going to show the answers. <laughs> okay. Did I do that okay or did I mess up? Anyone else get those? <coughs> okay. It's going to take a little bit of practice for you guys to remember that cosecant goes with sine, secant goes with cosine. It's just one of those things that's going to, by accident, be memorized and you just practice it I on your homework. Gonna, like, change up to, like, the order? Yeah. It's possible. Probably what you'll see more of is I won't ask you for all six of them, I'll ask you for a random one. So if I randomly ask you for a cosecant, your brain has to say, okay, who's related to cosecant, sign, find sign, and then flip it. Because yeah. most people will agree, it's not very fun to go ahead and memorize things unnecessarily. So you want to memorize intrig, it's all about relationships. If you can memorize the core part, sine, cosine, tangent, and then memorize the relationships for everything else, it's a lot less things to memorize. All right, moving along. So this is more specific to what you're going to see on the ACT and eventually on your homework. Tangent of angle A is 7 over 12 in some mystery right triangle. What's the cosine of A? Well, I would start by drawing yourself a little right triangle. And it doesn't really matter what it looks like. If you're the kind of person who absolutely needs things to be drawn to scale, then you take time making sure they're drawn to scale. But here's angle A. And if I told you the tangent was 7 over 12, Remember, tangent's formula is opposite over adjacent. So you should be able to label two parts of your triangle. The opposite side needs to be a 7, and the adjacent side needs to be a 12. Well, they want us to find the cosine of A. What is the formula for cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. What's a problem? We don't know the hypotenuse. Could you calculate the hypotenuse? Sure could. It's Pythagorean theorem. So we'll set up 12 squared plus 7 squared equals x squared, and then you'll have to square root this. This is not a very pretty number. I would like you guys to leave these as radicals, and if they reduce, you have to give me reduced radicals. I think it's 193. Okay. I would not count you correct at this level. I know in geometry it was okay, but in algebra 2 it's no longer okay. So square root of 193 is your hypotenuse. You would try to reduce your radical. For instance, if I had something like the square root of 32, do you guys agree that would reduce? Okay. 193, I mean, it, you can try for a while, but I don't think it reduces at all. What is wrong with me leaving my answer to look like this? Think back to Geo. Were you allowed to have 
fraction uh, radicals in the denominator? No. Do you remember what you had to do? Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 193. This was called rationalizing the denominator. So up top, I know it looks really disgusting, but you've got 12 times the square root of 193 over 193. That's your answer. Icky. I know. Trig does not always come out pretty. And unless it's a real life application, your ACT is going to want it written in the most pretty form it considers, and that's pretty according to them. <laughs> so, all right. Cosine of angle A is one half. What's the tangent of A? Again, I think it would help you if you had a little triangle drawn. And again, it doesn't have to be drawn to scale. So if cosine is one over two, that means the adjacent side is one, because remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. They want to know the tangent of A. Well, why are we not ready to give the answer? Yeah, we need the opposite. So set up Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared plus whoever he is squared equals 2 squared. So you're going to end up taking 2 squared and subtracting 1 squared. Is that square root of 3? Okay. So now tell me, tangent is supposed to be opposite over adjacent. So square root of 3 over 1. And that's just square root of 3. Radicals are fine as long as they're in the numerator. If you wrote square root of 3 over 1, I'm not going to count you wrong. It's just not necessary. Okay, same idea. It would really help me if I saw a triangle. So let's draw ourselves a little triangle. Here's angle A again. Sine is 7 over 12, so that means sine, remember, was opposite over hypotenuse. You don't. It's, it could be, if you put them up here, Jasmine, you're still going to get the right answer. You're just going to kind of have it drawn differently, but the ratios will come out the same. So opposite over hypotenuse is 12. I think we need to do a little Pythagorean theorem to find adjacent because I don't know it and I need it for tangent. So you're going to end up doing 7 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. So you'll end up subtracting on this one. Ooh, it's ugly again. Square root of 95. So now we set up tangent. Oh. Anyone know why this one's a little tricky? What did they ask you for? Tangent of B. Okay. I think a lot of people just wrote down the tangent of A. Check what you wrote down. It's still an easy problem. We just have to be careful. Since this time I want tangent of B, I'm up here at this corner. So tangent would be his opposite over his adjacent. Actually turned out to be an easier problem because you don't have to rationalize. The answer is square root of 97, 95 over 7. All right. That was tricky. Classic ACT trickery, by the way. Sorry for those of you who took your ACT practice test on Saturday and we had a copying issue apparently. I think it was probably my fault in some respect. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. <coughs> you got the answer key. So you score it. You didn't? Okay, this is an application problem, but the same idea will continue. So John stands 150 meters from a water tower and sights the top at an angle of elevation of 36 degrees. How tall is the tower? Now, for some reason, we're assuming John is not standing. He's apparently laying on the ground. Or else they're just not counting the distance from his eyes to the ground. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He's in a hole, apparently. So... When you guys move on to trig, more of your problems will be more realistic. So, like, they'll tell you John's eyes are this many feet or meters above the ground, and you'll have to incorporate that into your answer. Is that last night? Yeah, on your um, homework, it, there is one like that, but I think they drew you a picture, so it wasn't as confusing. But let's pretend John's laying on the ground or he's in a hole. Whoops. So, of course, there's no picture drawn here, but we can handle this. 
150 meters from the water tower. So if this is the tower and this is John laying on the ground, he's 150 meters away. And the angle of elevation is 36. Where does the angle of elevation get drawn on this triangle? Top, at the bottom, right. It's from the ground looking up or from your eyes looking up. 36 degrees. The question is, how tall is the water tower? Look at your information that I gave you. Is this a sine setup, a cosine setup, or a tangent setup? It's tangent. Very good. So tangent of 36 equals opposite over adjacent. When x was in the numerator, do we multiply these or divide these? Multiply. So any order, multiplication doesn't matter. Just make sure if you do tan first that you close the parenthesis after the 36. And did everyone check their mode before they started typing? Okay, what'd you get? 109, roughly? Meters. Yeah. Meters, good. Now, if for some reason they told you that John's eyes were, you know, 1.6 meters above the ground, what that would mean is you would find X, and then you would say, okay, from here to the ground is 1.6 more. So you'd add 1.6. It's not a big deal. I, I should cross that off, but <laughs> in case they did incorporate that, which I know they did on your homework last night or this weekend. Okay, Jessica standing 100 feet. Oh, speak of the devil. From the base of a tall building, she measures her angle from her eyes to the top of the building to be 84 degrees. So that's an angle of elevation. And this time they do tell you her eyes are five feet above the ground. So they don't give you a picture, but we can handle this. So here she is, standing away. I'm going to draw a really bad picture here. Definitely not to scale, but get over it. And here's the building. They tell you that her eyes to the ground is, what is it, five feet above the ground. So from here to here is five feet. We'll talk about that at the end of our problem. 84 degrees was her angle of elevation, so that's from her eyes looking up to the top. And the only other thing they told me was she's 150 feet away. Now, when you do your trig function, you are going to find the variable x, which is from here to here. But why is that not the height of the building? Yeah, so once you find x, you still have to add in the 5 feet that was her ground to her measuring device, which apparently is her eyes. So tan again, I think, tan 84 equals x over 150. And for x, you get 140, no, 1427.2. But then you still have to add in the 5. So 1432.2. Did I do that okay? Okay. Um, I will agree with you that these questions become difficult if they don't give you a picture because drawing the picture sometimes sets, sets you in the wrong direction. So be careful when you draw your picture. The 13.4, all that lesson was, and we actually already did it, was how to find angles. So tell me, anytime you find an angle on your calculator, what do you have to type? Not sine, cosine, tangent anymore. You have to type second sine second cosine, second tangent. That's when you're finding angles. And I think you realize on your homework, the first couple problems were all finding angles. So you had to do second sine, second cosine, second tan. All right, that's it.